All right, Adrian, come out. All right, gentlemen, you receive your instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Uh, anything from here down is going to be considered low. Anything from here down is going to be considered low. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's get this thing on. When we met with Adrian Broner yesterday, and he was asked the kind of pr about the kind of pressure he feels after that DeMarco performance to follow that up. He said he's not going to try to top himself, but trust him, we'll love it. I hope so. The odds on this fight make Tyson Douglas look like an expected squeaker. So we'll see whether the bookmakers have it right as they give Reese no chance whatsoever. Broner is longer, willowier, as you can see. Quicker, it almost goes without saying. And Reese begins with a chopping right hand to the back of Broner's head. Referee Earl Brown moves forward to caution him on it. <laughs> Broner blocked Reese's left with his right glove. Reese is not fighting like he's intimidated. No, he's not intimidated at all, but he does come straight down the pipe when he attacks Broner. That could be dangerous for him uh, later on, but he is not afraid at all, and uh, he's definitely here to try to win. You know what else? He's showing some speed here early. Reese is. <laughs> he did his homework, and he came to try to do the job. The body shots for Reese. So far, Broner has contented himself to throw a couple of jabs. Hasn't unleashed a right hand. Reese believes he can take advantage of Broner's very wide stance, which Broner maintains so he can carry that punch all through the fight. But um, Reese believes that makes Broner hittable. Well, it might, in fact, create that situation, particularly for the body shots. Yeah, it could, but the problem he has, uh, Reese, that is, is that he's backing up. He can't back off of Broner and make it hard uh, to hit him because he has to push Broner back. Then it would be hard for Broner to adjust with the wide stance. A couple of left hooks to the body by Reese. The crowd is waking up just a little bit as they notice that Reese is making all the action. Broner seems very relaxed. You know, Reese is winning the round so far. We're two-thirds of the way through it. <laughs> More good body shots for Reese. Broner finally throws the right hand. It was just a tiny bit short. Good left hook by Broner, and Reese clocks him with a right hand upstairs. Another right hand lands for Reese. Don't push his head down, Adrian. Don't push his head down. Reese ducking a couple of Broner punches there at five feet four. That's quite a duck. Little right hand dropped in from Broner, but thought Reese won that round. Well, he certainly created more action. Okay. What I want you to do is go straight up the middle. Keep, keep popping, take your time. Keep taking your time, working your jab, okay? All right? Work your jab. And the right hand is right there, right over that left shoulder. You hear me? I'm warning him about uh, um a little bit of a victim of your own success because when you move your feet and you pick him off, it's beautiful, right? But what you're doing is you're getting that little bit confident. Don't forget, this kid is a counter puncher. I warn him about pushing your head down, but you punch it on the top of his head. Don't punch him on the top of his head, all okay. right? Okay, okay, right. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm talking yeah. about, right? Don't lunge. Right? Don't lunge. He's seen, uh, he come, Reese come with two beautiful left body shots. Something that we haven't seen many guys try on Broner, but at least he came to try something different. That was a good double left to the body and something that we don't expect to see out of most of his opponents. CompuBox numbers in round one. CompuBox saw Broner landing 14 to 34 and Reese 13 of 56. Harold Letterman agreed with Max Kellerman 
that Gavin Reese won round one. Reese came in with a game plan so far. He's executing it, and he's ha he has the hand speed to do it. That's the most surprising thing so far to me, is Reese's hands pretty quick. Well, again, as long as Reese can maintain some of that hand speed, and Broner wants to stand with his feet that wide apart, he'll land body shots. Don't push that down. He also just landed a pretty good straight Don't right hand. Fight. Four body shots from Reese. Yeah, it's Broner reaching with a jab and shaking his head. And Broner's right. He's most of this stuff isn't landing that solidly, but it's most of the punching is being done by Reese. What, what Broner's doing is trying to take Reese's confidence right now, but that's why he keeps shaking his head, telling him no. In other words, yeah, you're landing, but it's doing nothing to me. I'm right here on top of you. I'm gonna be in your face, being a problem all night. That's what he's basically trying to do to Reese. We have to hit Reese harder to take his confidence away. Reese is a cocky little Welshman. And Reese is also moving his head more than he has in the past. One of the reasons the odds were so long is Reese has not shown a lot of head movement in the past, and Broner's a big puncher. But you heard the caution of Gary Lockett between rounds, and he said, Watch out, he's a counter puncher. Left hook lands upstairs for Reese. And that gets a big rise from the crowd. He, and he lands two more body shots. He caught Brunner in the middle of a shuffle and got him a good left hook off. And Reese is doing something, at least so far, that the good old time small pressure fighters did, which is use their lack of height to their advantage. By getting so low, it becomes hard for their opponent to hit them. But staying outside, he's going to run into some big problems with that straight right hand. And now Broner's starting to land some clean shots. Broner's starting to pick Reese up a little bit. Right hand lead for Broner. Good right hand by Broner. Dropping the right hand on Reese's chin. Another good body shot for Reese. Another right hand upstairs. Gavin Reese is in the fight all the way through the first couple of rounds. But that straight right hand is starting to close the eye a little bit. He may want to start trying to keep that off of him. <laughs> Not an easy round to score, but it appeared Reese was again more active. I agree. Okay, come on, sit back. Okay, March 16, Timothy Bradley fights for the first time oh, since good. his listen, disputed listen victory over Manny Pacquiao, facing Sam, Ruslan Sam, Probudnikov, immediately following that show. Stay tuned for Road to Rio Salvarado 2. A look at both men as they prepare for their March 30 rematch of their outstanding fight in October, won by Brandon Rios. Let's go. Come on, push it out now. Okay. All right, let's go. Right, right hand now. Wide open, bro. Yeah, let's go. Push it's it out open. now. Push it out. Right now. Back him up, keep backing him up, you know what I'm saying? He's saying uh, Broner wind up with the right hand, faint the left, then roll up with the bolo and steal the straight right lead, straight down the middle. Boom, good right hand down the middle. But he comes back and he shows a little bit too much, and Reese catches him while he's in the middle of a shuffle with a good left hook. But Broner took it. Copy box numbers in two. Broner was 18 of 53, pretty good. But Gavin Reese was 24 of 54 including 19 of 36 power shots. Right, even though Broner landed some good shots in that round to give you the sense he was in control, while he was giving you that sense, Reese was landing punches. Solid shots by Broner there, countering as Reese dived in. Left hook shot. Now Broner is giving ground in an attempt to find his range as Reese comes in. Round three, Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. World Championship Boxing main event, Adrian Broner in the red trunks against Gavin Reese in the red and blue. Reese from Wales, Broner from Cincinnati. Good right hand by Broner. Reese drops.
dropping his hands and showing Broner his head movement. There's no lack of confidence, that's for sure. As I said, he is one cocky little Welshman. And he has a sneaky quick left hook that he brings from so down low and then throws it up top that it's invisible to, to Broner to the last second. There it is, right there. Broner's hand speed starting great more oh, opportunities for him. Broner hurt him bad with that yep. left hook right there. Yep. Almost dropped him with that left hook. Uppercut by Broner. Oh, hold him. Watch out. Watch out. Let him go. Tell you what, ah, Reese has on, the heart on. of a come champion. On. You can believe that. Because he's taking some big shots. And he's still coming at Broner with everything he's got. There's a body shot for Broner. Uppercut lands for Broner. Starting to get more accurate. Starting to pick Reese off. And Reese reaches out and grabs and holds Broner by the waist. Broner turns to wave at the crowd. And, and here's one of the elements about of Broner that's so fantastic is here's a, a real game uh, awkward challenger who's bringing the fight to him and won the first couple rounds and Broner has that power on top of the speed and the skills to change a fight quickly. Hey, don't let him hold you no more, you hear me? You break him, hey, you break him down when he start holding you and stuff, okay? All right, don't let him hold you. You know what I'm saying? Go about okay, rounds, let's go. All right. You see everything? All right. All right. You've got to move these feet, right? Yeah. You've got to pick him off and not reach. Don't fight his okay? fight. Because when you do that, you're out working him because he's throw ones and twos. Yeah. It's when you stand inside, that's when you stand one low threes, fours, and fives, okay? Yeah. All right, son? Come on now. We have to practice what we've been doing in the gym, all right? Here you see Broner with that wind-up right hand again. That right hand lead has been his best weapon. All right, all right, let's go. After that, he push, launched a big attack against the ropes. Hit him with a nice uppercut, a right hook. Great combination work on the ropes. Broner started to pile up some copy box numbers in the third round. 25 of 38 power shots against 7 of 25 for Reese. Adrian Broner went to a different level in the third round. Harold, how do you have it, 2-3? The action, the momentum of the fight is changing. 2-1, to 29-28, Gavin Reese. Uh, I thought Gavin Reese clearly won the first two oh, rounds. Hold him, but then again, Adrian Broner was clowning, you know? It was like he gave him the, gave the first two rounds away. In round three, Adrian Broner became Adrian Broner. You know, really showed what he's got. He dropped good right hands on Gavin Reese. He clearly won the third round. Two to one, Gavin Reese. You heard Gary Lockett in the corner tell Reese not to reach. And I think Reese is reaching in that last round, Roy, was because Broner gave him a little distance and started oh. climbing and coming in. There he is. Right uppercut towards Gavin Reese. And he's hurt pretty Six. bad. Seven. Eight. Where you at? Huh? Only the second time in his career that Gavin Reese has tasted canvas. Broner did it with a single shot. A beautiful right up cut. When he went down against Katelnik in 08, that was in the 12th round after a long fight. So this is the first time that Reese has ever been knocked down while still relatively fresh in the fight. Reese trying to get to those body shots again and slow Broner down a little bit. But Broner is getting into the target practice area. <laughs> Gavin Reese is in trouble as Broner begins to flash that hand speed and throw blinding combinations. He knows Reese is going to be right there in front of him, so he's letting him have it right there in front of him. And look at the heart of Gavin Reese. Well, he, has he goes a... back into the jaws of the lion. He has a big heart. 
and he's perfectly prepared for this fight, and he had a perfect game plan, and Broner's starting to beat him up anyway. Still some fight left in Gavin Reese. A lot of fight left in Reese. It'll be interesting to see what Gary Lockett has to say after this round. I love Lockett's style as a trainer and the way he's communicating with the fighter. They have a great future doing that. Tell you what, I like Bronner's attack up and down. He's working the head and the body. Most young guys don't do this. You've got to remember, he's only 23 years old. He has a, a calculated body attack. He almost dropped him with a body shot right there. Gavin Reese took some hellacious punishment in the fourth round. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. You people go. Listen. No, you, you, uh, listen. Right. Listen to me. You can't. No, you can't. Right. You're taking too much punishment. Right. Right. No. There's that beautiful right uppercut right on the chin that uh, Reese was not looking for. Caught him off guard. And like we say all the time, it's the punch that you don't see coming that catches you. He came in with a right hand and stayed right in the middle. He hit him up with the elbow, and boom, there was the right uppercut right as he thought Bronner was going to exit. And we're looking at two reactions to the knockdown. There's Gavin Reese's girlfriend, Kayla. As soon as Reese hit the canvas, she got up and ran out of the arena. Now, that's, that's Broner's father to the left, Thomas Knight, and his trainer, Mike Stafford, sitting next to him. And I mentioned Gary Lockett's style as a trainer. Mike Stafford is proving with Adrian Broner, as he already proved, with many amateurs, including Rashi Warren, that he is a tremendous trainer, capable of teaching a fighter maximum skills. Power shots in the fourth round. Broner was 40 of 67. Reese, 22 of 58, as he kept fighting back. And I think that's probably what Gary Lockett was saying between rounds is, if you keep going after him like this, you're going to take too many counter punches. Well, I think Lockett started thinking about stopping the fight just now. He did, he did. And the bad thing about it is that Broner just said the round before that, that he thought uh, Reese had two more rounds and it was over with for him. Reese rips Broner with two right hands. Broner's already gotten hit more in this fight than in his last three fights combined. <laughs> <laughs> that Larkin, I mean, that Reese has a heart, son. He is one stubborn guy. No question about it. Yeah, I'd like to see Reese some more. Because he, he, he's started to take a real beating in the last two rounds, but here he is. Oh, good shot. Our corner man in Gavin Reese's corner Wait, is so telling much. us Wait. that Gary Lockett Wait. did, in fact, call referee Earl Brown over and wanted to stop the fight, and Reese talked him out of it. And a good thing, I guess, because Reese has landed two solid right hands in this round. Well, he's trying his hardest, son. It doesn't get better than this as far as an effort. Yeah, he's taking a beating at the hands of Adrian Broner, but he beat a lot of lightweights. And he's still fighting and still hitting Broner cleanly. He's definitely showing that Broner can be hit. But he hits back as well. <laughs> right. And that's why Broner can be hit in spite of all the physical advantages. Because Broner enters the ring to hurt his opponent. And I think that more than wrapping on the weight of the ring and clowning and all that, that's what's connecting with the fans. The appreciation of a superior athlete, a superior skilled fighter who uses that stuff to do damage. 100%. It's because he's an offensive fighter. He is there to try to knock his opponent out. Oh, oh. Another uppercut, this time with the left hand. To the body, though. Five, six, how you feel? Seven. And Reese said it was a low blow, eight. but it was a body shot that Reese wasn't ready for. He thought it was going to break. All right, let's go. So Broner has scored knockdowns with both the right uppercut and the left uppercut. trouble again and Gary Lockett is up on the ring apron with the white towel so there's the TKO's as trainer Gary Lockett gets what he wants stopping the fight from the corner good stoppage from Gary Lockett 
And by the way, good performance as a trainer. He yep. had his man prepared as well as you can prepare a fighter. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we'll see more of Gary Lockett, the trainer, and we'll see more of Gavin Reese, the fighter. And we're certainly going to see a whole lot more of Mike Stafford and Adrian Broner. <laughs> Broner said, we'll love it. When was the last time he turned in a performance that you didn't want to see? And he closed the show here, landing 40 of 57 power shots before Lockett was able to get the referee to see the white towel. Wow. Well, Roy, you just said wow. Cause Let's take a look at some replays. First, I, the knockdown, Roy. Yeah, I like the right hand lead. I love the right hand lead all night long, but the body shot here is the one that caught him. And it caught him because right there he relaxed. Ronald noticed he relaxed, and boom, there was the body shot right as he relaxed. And it wasn't low, it was right on or oh, above the, the belt line. A perfect body shot. That's why they tell you to protect yourself at all times. He wasn't it ready, working? so it caught him. Once again, that right hand lead, and they lock up a little bit. Just as he relaxes right there, Bruno sees that the ref's not coming in, so he's still fighting. And that was a great body shot. You relax like that, and your stomach muscles go slack. Yeah, where everything goes flat. Now, here's Lockett. Doing a as great job. Broner was firing combinations to Gavin Reese's head. Lockett gave it a moment of wait and then had seen it up. Yes. He did a great job of protecting his fighter because his fighter would not have protected himself. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Earl Brown calls a halt to the bout, the official time, two minutes, 59 seconds of round number five. The winner by knockout victory, still WBC lightweight champion of the world, still undefeated from Cincinnati, Ohio. Adrian, the problem!